Okay, then uh, we came to the last session of our mechanical servo governance. So this is about real world governor. Uh, you can see, uh, I I'm planning to discuss about a UG8 that the Woodward governor, which is a common governor, and we can find in the industry in many engines this installation and it's a bit advanced governor so we are going to discuss uh, the application of this and uh, the uh, the things that we came across about these um, theories uh, and uh, how this combination uh, make that this thing work in a real world so first of all for basic introduction this uh, I will uh, introduce these parts of this governor appearance. The top one, the, the topmost one is uh, the DC motor, which controls the governor speed from remote operation. So in my uh, load sharing video that I have spoken about uh, remote adjusting the speed of uh, an engine. So we have in the bus bar, um, controlling lever uh, to lower or raise the engine rpm so we can see uh, okay uh, like this arrangement so it's kind of yeah so it's kind of this arrangement um, you can see in the main bus bar uh, there's a this is the lever which speed controlling now uh, once we uh, operate this uh, switch then the DC supply will transfer or send to the governor motor. Then this governor motor will turn in direction clockwise or anti-clockwise, causing engine speed to increase or decrease. Uh, apart from this mechanical uh, switching of this switch, if the system is uh, installed with PMS uh, arrangement, then the power management system through a relay module they it will supply this dc supply to increase or decrease the engine load depending on the load sharing requirement okay again we move back to our uh, previous diagram so then uh, this is the dial panel and the first dial is for speed group adjustment as we know for generator parallel we need to adjust uh, droop adjustment so this is the norm for adjusting the droop thereafter we can see speed setting knob this is the local speed setting knob so by turning this you can if you turn it clockwise then the engine speed will raise if you turn it anti-clockwise then the engine speed will lower so you can uh, turn is many turns so uh, as uh, far as up to 20 turns so for completing one turn there will be an indicator it is uh, right below there so if you make it one turn so it will count one and if you make it 20 so here it will show as 20 so this is the turn repeater it is the speed setting indicator actually just to count this has no special purpose it's just only to show how many turns that we have turned in this speed setting and this third one is the load limit so the load limit means uh, you can set this to 10 or to 0 0 means the governor will not run the engine will not run it will remain the fuel rack will remain in, at zero but if you want to have 100 percent load suppose the generator is a uh, thousand kilowatt uh, generator then you have to put it to 10 to get thousand kilowatt output if you want to run the generator at all times and not to exceed let's say 80 percent so then suppose in that case you have to put in this in eight then the engine will not uh, give uh, it engine will not receive more fuel to overcome uh, 80 percent so the governor will limit maximum fuel setting uh, to 80 percent then it's full load so and uh, here you can see a small pointer there at side. This is we call compensation pointer. As we discussed in our previous lesson, compensation range in our last uh, latest uh, governor discussion, we discussed about compensation or reset action arrangement. There are 
one lever with the pivoting point i call it uh, to adjust the compensation range so this point is the compensation range adjuster and here at the bottom we can see a small screw plug which contain inside the needle valve arrangement and it is the compensation sorry the first this one is for compensation range and the bottom one is for compensation rate adjustment the needle valve adjustment is for the compensation rate and uh, we can see here this is the level of oil because this whole stuff is uh, in the oil bath uh, i mean this uh, enclosure in, inside it contain oil and this all movable parts are moving inside the oil bath and this one is the fuel output shaft which is connected to the engine right hmm. now in the left hand this is the diagram actually it is the real arrangement inside uh, this governor so we can see some similarity which we were discussed in our previous lessons so you can see this is the ball head arrangement and with the flyweights and the speeder spring and here is the uh, gear arrangement which is connected to the engine but through a special laminated spring drive which was not available in our previous discussion actually purpose of this uh, laminated uh, spring drive is to uh, damp any vibrational impact from the gear drive shaft from the engine suppose if there is any load change or then due to this speed fluctuation in the engine uh, the gears uh, with their backlash effect there might be some vibration or jerk arrangement uh, jerk, jerks occur so if we have this jerk or vibration in our ball head arrangement this governor will start jiggling and it will be not stable so to prevent any um, shaking vibrating or any uh, mechanical noise transferring from the gearbox drive to ball head or the governor drive arrangement so there is a laminated spring drive which will uh, absorb that jerk then you can see the same drive shaft will drive a rotating bush which this pilot valve we know this is the pilot valve in our previous diagram that we have already discussed this one so this pilot valve is not just moving inside a static uh, bushing this rot this is there is a rotating bush we call it a rotating bush it's drive by the same drive this because to reduce the friction in other words if you want to reduce the dead band we have to maintain minimum friction at uh, each uh, moving component so uh, introducing this rotating bushing to this uh, sliding pilot valve will minimize minimize its friction between these moving surfaces then uh, hereafter uh, it will reduce the dead band another thing we have to keep in our mind uh, in most application wherever it is applicable we have to use ball bearings to have minimum friction in governor applications so then uh, we can maintain the dead band in minimum value right from this pilot valve arrangement we can see this is our power piston but there is a small uh, dissimilarity because we do we cannot see here uh, spring on top side apart uh, from that the spring they have used the hydraulic coil pressure for spring action we can see due to this cross-sectional area difference uh, the bottom part of this piston having more cross-sectional area than the top part so always if you have equal pressure from uh, in both side uh, the force will be greater from a lower uh, from lower side to upside so always it will try to move upside if they have equal pressure uh, suppose then this pump arrangement we did not discuss in our uh, previous uh, lesson this is a small gear pump uh, uh, situated inside this uh, enclosure and uh, it will suck the oil from sump and it will uh, pressurize the oil we are relief valve and accumulator arrangement it will transmit to this system the governor 
So the relief valve is to prevent any damage to the pump in case of uh, overpressurizing and uh, to avoid any pressure increment in uh, system. Then the accumulators are placed to avoid any jerking or pulsation in the hydraulic system. Suppose in due to some uh, movement, this piston moves up or down and uh, this mechan all mechanical um, parts will move up and down. That time there will be a flow variations. Due to this flow variation, there will be a suction uh, effect and also uh, discharge effects. In such case, they are might be having some uh, ripples or jerk or pulsation in the system. To avoid that, we will always keep accumulators. They will act as buffers arrangement to maintain the hydraulic system pressure uh, in the uh, constant manner. Right. Then we can see uh, our compensation arrangement. It is like a mirror view in this diagram. Uh, the transmitting piston is in this uh, purple color and receiving piston is in blue color. The needle valve arrangement is here. Apart from a reservoir, it will dump to the uh, sump via this line. Now we will discuss. Suppose in case the engine speed drops, then the flyweight will move in. Then this lever will move down, causing pilot valve to move down. This oil will sweep through this port to the underside of the piston, causing these pistons to move up. Then the output shaft will turn clockwise and causing fuel to increase. The same time, this fulcrum, this floating lever, uh, this sorry, compensation adjusting lever will move down this end and the transmitting piston will move down, causing receiving piston to lift up then it will initiate to lift the pilot valve and causing uh, ad, uh, stopping any admission admittance of uh, oil to the um, power piston bottom after a while uh, depending on this needle valve setting the oil trapped uh, between transmitting piston and the receiving piston will escape to the sump causing uh, to have equilibrium and to achieve original set point. So this is the normal working arrangement. Now we will we can see uh, what are the other uh, special arrangement made in this governor arrangement. So you can see in output shaft it is connected to droop palm. So in compensation system we have a transient droop. That means it's a temporary droop. But this is the main roof arm that is in case that this governor is we are planning to use in parallel operation then we need to have a droop uh, characteristic to achieve this we use roof arm and this is the droop adjusting lever so depending on this cam arrangement this pivoting point is uh, we can slide so then the mechanical lever advantage uh, which is act on this spring will change. Then uh, the negative feedback and proportional action will be changed, hence the gain. So thus the uh, offset val value will vary. Uh, and then we can move to uh, speed setting. This is the speed setting. And this is the speed setting, which means this dial indicator and the first one group I just this one and the speed setting when once you operate in this speed setting, you can see this bevel gear arrangement. It will turn causing this speed nut, the speed nut it has outside some uh, gear teeth. So it will turn and move along this speed screw up or down. Suppose in case of if you want to increase the speeds let's say it will move up causing this pilot piston to sorry it will uh, if you want to uh, speed up the engine then it will move down causing uh, this pilot bushing to move down and hence the enter the uh, oil to the downside of the power piston and uh, the same way this is the turn indicator which is this one number fourth uh, knob fourth knob the speed setting 
it will shows how many turns that you have turned in the speed setting. You can see here is a vertical bevel gear arrangement which is connected to this dotted. It means this uh, DC motor. Suppose in case if you turn this clockwise, this DC motor due to its supply voltage, then it will turn and causing this speed knob to turn as well as it will uh, turn the speed nut causing this piston force uh, to increase or decrease by moving this speed nut up or down thus adjusting the speed uh, due to power piston movement uh, yeah that is that there and then we can see the load indicator it is connected to the power piston as the power piston up and down this uh, this rack and pinion arrangement will move and then the load indicator will show how much is the load and this load uh, movement of this load is depending on the cam limit there's the cam limit which is uh, connected to this load limit then you can turn this cam to adjust how much is it maximum um, movement of this lever once you set it to zero then there will be a tripping arrangement this load shutdown lever it will activate causing this uh, pilot valve to push down thus draining this uh, oil beneath the power piston to sump via this port Yeah, from here it will move, from here it will drain to the uh, sum. Uh, now, we can see the compensation, this fulcrum, that is this compensation range adjustment. So you can move this fulcrum here and there, then your compensation range will change. As we discussed, this is the needle valve. Adjusting the needle valve position, you can adjust the compensation rate. Mm, yeah, this is, yeah, that's it. This is about the governor of uh, mechanical servo hydraulic with your G8 arrangement. Suppose if you want to adjust uh, your governor characteristic, I mean, if you notice, suppose this governing installed for first time or after a major repair, then you will observe there is some hunting in the governor. I mean, no stable operation. Oh, it will uh, take too much time to settle on the speed after a, uh, after observing a load change. So in such case, you have to adjust the compensation. To adjust the compensation, there's a procedure. You have to repair the manual first always. And normal practice is first, you have to lose this uh, nut and adjust this compensation pointer to its maximum upward position and then you have to remove this plug uh, to adjust the needle pair and inside you can have uh, two uh, slots with the one locking arrangement prevent its setting as uh, to preventing its uh, changing of setting so carefully use a phillips screwdriver uh, and you can adjust the needle pair before you adjust okay first you adjust this most upper point and then you have to lose this compensation needle valve until that uh, there's a considerable hunting in your speed engine so you can leave it for 30 second minimum if you want to uh, remove the air from the hydraulic system so once you finish with the air then you can and start to closing the needle valve until you get stable operation. Once it's settled in a stable in a set RPM, then you have to close the needle valve uh, one fourth turn more. That is the adjustment of a uh, compensation arrangement. And uh, but if the if you could not able to achieve a stabilization adjusting the needle valve then you have to uh, refer the manual there will be another further step again to uh, uh, vary this compensation range adjustment and then after to carry out needle valve uh, throttling so always refer to your manual and then only uh, you should track the governor as it may cause serious damages by over speeding and the other scenarios hmm.
Right. So this is uh, all about the uh, servo hydraulic governors. Uh, if you have any questions, especially uh, writing your exam uh, questions, you can comment uh, in comment section. So I will uh, reply uh, for your uh, to uh, get clear your doubts. Then we will move to electronic governance in our next session. Uh, there I will discuss how this main engine uh, governor, especially in MAN, BMW or other Mozilla engine that they are using electronic governance. So we will discuss how this governor arrangement is there with the actuator. Uh, until that, uh, thank you for uh, watching this video. Uh, if you are not subscribed yet, better that you subscribe because it will encourage myself and also you will get uh, more uh, detailed videos, especially lecturing videos and also some common facts uh, which will be more interesting and uh, useful. Okay, see you then in our next video with Electronic Guard.